Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for this session you've granted us. I thank you for your servants who have already connected virtually for this session. I pray that all what we are going to discuss, all what we are going to go through, let it be for the success of their studies and the time they will spend with us. I pray for the gadgets we are using, the internet and power, let everything stay stable for this session. I've prayed all that through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So I'm going to share uh, my screen and then we start off immediately. So you are most welcome to Uganda Christian University Library. We are going to have a discussion or we'll take you through the different platforms you can be able to access in order to access the library resources. This session is two in one. We are having the first session for library resources and then we shall have a, a short break and then later we have the Tanitin, which is the plagiarism checker software used by the university. And then I expect to meet you again on Friday because that's the arrangement we have made with your dean, Dr. Rosemary. So today, to start with, uh, we have a library site, which is library.ucu.ac.ug. When you go to your browser, just type in library.ucu.ac.ug. Uh, it will be able to display. I've also shared in the, in the chat the link. You display the page you are viewing right now. So on the library page, you will be able even to visit the university main page. You'll be able to visit the e-learning platform. The link is there. The alpha platform and then also Google Scholar, which is a, a, a search engine. And then we also have eBook Central, our main database for books, though it's accompanied with other databases. Resources for researchers, this is still under development. And then for those who would like to join the university, they can also still apply from here instead of going back to the main site of the university. So that's the general menu. Now, when you come to the second menu here, we'll have the library links, online library. It takes us to the link where we shall be using for off campus, uh, wherever you, we are. For example, we have our colleague Alex who is in Juba, still can be able to access our resources. Even those who are in different parts of this country. Then we have electronic resources. This link may not be so useful right now for you, especially when it comes to eBooks, eJournals and the online databases because the links which are here work directly when you want to invest the network. But if you get a, an opportunity to visit one of our campuses, in West Nile, we have a campus in Imbale, in Kabale, and even here in Kampara, then you can be able to use these direct links. Then e-learning, as I talked about it earlier, the model platform, and then Church of Uganda archives, those ones you'll be able to access them, the resources which are online. Though we have also the print materials, which are housed here at the main campus in Mukono. And it, it covers materials from 1877. That is when the Church Missionary Society led by Alexandria Mackey, they visited this country to preach the word of God. So all the documentation from that period up to now, including all the documentation from your respective dioceses, and even the bishops who have, who have been uh, the leaders of your diocese, your respective dioceses, 
all that information we have it here up to around the year 2010, including the materials for the university, which started in 1997, coming from its mother institution, Bishop Tuck Theological College, which started in 1903 on Namilembe Hill, and then later it came to Mukono in 1913. So all that information, if you need to carry out research in such areas, then we have those resources in that line. Then remote X uh, of, uh, of campus access. This one we've been using it, but there is a new platform which I'm going to introduce to you. And please, it's the one you can use, which will be hosted early next year on the link of online library. Then the library catalog, uh, we can have a look at the catalog. The catalog, it's a platform where we organize the bibliographic information of the print materials, especially the test books. So the test books we have physically at all our campuses, as I said earlier, you can be able to view them via the library catalog. And the catalog gives you uh, a picture over what we have already in stock. And if you are around or near any campus, you, and the book is there, you can be able to access it. So we can search, for example, we can search for agri, agribusiness management. We find out whether we have any material on that. So there are three materials here on agribusiness. And then one of the material, uh, five copies are in Bishop Barham University College, that is Kabale. Then we have agribusiness management. There are 25 copies. They are here at Hamukasa Library. And then among them, three of them have been borrowed out. There, and then it means we have 22 copies on the shelves. Then we also have another on agri science, fundamentals and applications. It's in Bishop Barham. There are 11 copies. So the catalog will assist you to know where the physical print is, and then you can be able to go and access them. When we come back to the main page, we have what we call the UCU Digital Repository. So the UCU Digital Repository, it is where we host the research materials, the conference papers, workshop papers, technical papers, and specific speeches or projects carried out by our staff and partners. So we categorize it into communities. We call them communities. For example, we have the African Policy Center. It's a center here. Books and book chapters, lecturers who have written books and book chapters, they share copies with us. Conference articles and proceedings, Department of Language, Literature and Language and Literature. This was a community project, translating all our local stories into uh, English. So they have two versions. If it is in Luo, then you find uh, an English translation. So that, that, that was a project, mostly stories which are being uh, shared with the children in schools. And then we also have the public lectures and speeches here. We normally post them towards the graduation. And then also research and publication. This one we can have a broader uh, look at it. And here we have collections. And these collections, we've grouped them into schools and faculties. When you come to your faculty of agriculture sciences, and you just click on it, you'll be able to view the materials which are there. For example, we have materials, the one written by other people, uh, like uh, Rosemary Vuriaba, your dean. There is Nakano Ajimedre, is also a staff. Ruth Gutime is also a staff there. Then there is Professor Elizabeth Chizito, is also a staff there. Uh, then there is also Winnie Namutosi, is also a staff there. So uh, apart from Selemba Godfrey, I'm not so sure, but the rest are lecturers. So these are the materials they've published. 
then also we have the ones for the late Thomas J. Kashubu Steven. He was a head of department of nutritional science in your faculty still. So he gave us a lot of materials. And by the time he passed on, he had promised to share with us more 12 publications of which we did receive them. May his soul rest in eternal peace. So uh, th these are all materials uh, from your lecturers. You can be able to access them free of charge. For example, when I click on farmers preferred traits, gynotype choices in Salonam Ethiopicum. Okay, let me click on it. So when you click on it, it will first give, it will first display to you the abstract. And if you need a copy, you go on the left-hand side of the page where we have view or open. And then you'll be able to access a PDF. So some of these materials, lecturers have published them elsewhere, but uh, the copyright allows us to upload them in our repository, especially when they are open access, or if the copyright uh, has expired, it can be like two years or three years, then we can be able to put it on open, and then our staff and students can be able to access. So this is a PDF. You can download it and use it for your academic benefit or research. So that is basically the repository. When we go back to the homepage, we have the link for research, which is still under development. So some of the links here, uh, they are still under development, so they are not complete. Then you can also request for trainings. This training was organized by 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 me and your dean so if you need a training separately you can still come here and request and we just fill uh, the google form and then we can be able to train you as an individual or in small groups so then uh, we have below here other features like other databases uh, the library resources, then also information literacy materials here. So this platform, we've, uh, we had to put it down and then redevelop it. So that's why some of the links do not take you too much far. Uh, we are, it is still under uh, construction. So, but uh, at least the resources, we made sure that you can be able to access them straight away. Then the rest of the services, and keep on coming in slowly by slowly. So uh, this is the main page. And now I'm going to take you to the other li the link, which we are going to use for off campus. I, I, I want to believe that everyone now is able to access the Moodle and Alpha platform because the link we are going to, you need it to, have those credentials which are used for Alpha or Moodle, and that is the access number at students.ucu.ac.ug, as well as the password which was given to you. So if you if you've not yet finished the registration, then that would mean uh, you are going to view whatever we are going to do, but you will be limited to some access. So that requires you to ensure that you register with the university fully, and then you can be able to access these resources. So on the new, on the new page here in my uh, tab, I'm going to type here, uh, UCU, is UCU simple tool dot DK. I'm going to share this in the chat as well. I've shared the link in the chat as well. So when you go to this link, it's going to take us to a page. It's the link, since, since our platform is still under development, that's why this link we are still accessing it separately, but it will be added there, as I said earlier. So this link, when you visit it, the moment you click on it, you load it on, it will take you to a page which has user authentication, and you are required to log in your UCU student email, that is the access number at student.uc.ac.ug and then your password. 
and then you are able to log in. So the platform is called ST Proxy, that is being supported by a tool called Simba Tool. So I'm going to log in and then shall be able to navigate. Please, if I'm too fast, let me know in the chat. I don't want to leave anyone behind. So this is our main page for off campus. Whether you are like Alex, who is in Juba, or anybody else, if you're in Rwanda or Burundi or Congo, or in Tanzania or in Kenya, you'll be able to access so long as you go to this link without any interruption. So we have a number of databases here, but we are going to select the key databases as far as your programs are concerned. And we are going to select the first one on, the, on, on your right, the first column, but the third row, we have EBSCO host. EBSCO host. I hope you carried a notebook. EBSCO host. So we shall be having a look at that. Then on the last column on the right, but the second row, we have ebook central, which is for books. Then on the same column, we have JSTAR, which is for journals. So we are going to look at we are going to look at those databases. And then later there is another database which has its own off-campus access, and that one we shall be able to access it direct, and that it is called Research for Life. You may have heard about it, or you've never heard about it, but we shall have a look at it. Okay, so let us start with the EBSCO host. So EBSCO host, it's a platform which has a number of databases. And in our library science language, we call it an aggregator. It's an aggregator because it hosts a number of databases. So when you come to its homepage, you click on choose databases. And then they will show you a number of databases we have access to. There is Academic Search Premier, which is multidisciplinary. It's for journals, magazines, and newspapers, international newspapers, not our local. Then Atlas Series, Atlas Series, Region Collection, which is for a region, and this one shall antique it. And then also Communication and Mass Media Complete, for those who are in communication, journalism and broadcasting, if your research is there, you can leave it unticked or if you can take it off. Then we have ELIC, in case you are going to teach, uh, if you are going to teach uh, in, your, in your school or in a college or in a vocational institute, you may need ELIC, but ELIC is purely education management and administration, anything related to education, you can untake it. Then we have green file, which is also multidisciplinary for journals. Then we have ebook academic collection. And then also we have ebook business collection. Business collection, it has materials of books on business alone. So we are going to leave these ones ticked and then we shall click OK.
I'm sorry for that. Okay, so when you look, when you look at these databases, I, I said there are three databases. I talked to EBSCOhost, ProQuest, eBook Central, and then JSTOR, Journal Storage. I've seen Alex asking. So we are going to look at all, all those three. And then the last one will be Research for Life. So when you come here, remember we've already selected our databases. So we are going to search. So I can type in agribusiness management. Okay. And then I'll search. So they are giving me 114 results. And the first one is financial management for agribusiness. Remember, we selected the books and the journals. So how do you get to know that it's a book? The moment you see the material when it has a table of content, that is a book. So the books on every score host, some of them we have full access and some we have partial access. So the partial access comes from the author of the material on the database, whereby you are given access to only 100 pages. And then after a certain period of time, you can be able to download more 100 pages. And then some of them, you can be able to download a full book. So the first one, let's try to download a full book and see what happens. Then you can be able to view the type of content Okay, so this is this table of content, agribusiness management, an overview, data collection and recording, financial recording, keeping, cash flow management, assessment of business equity, taxation management, and so on. So this is its table of content. Then you can also look at the most relevant pages of this book. So they will show you the most relevant pages of the book. The moment you say plus sign, it means when you click on it, it will display a drop down. Okay. It's not, not downloading for us a full book. Okay. Maybe you can go to a uh, full text PDF. Okay. Then on the right hand, on the left hand side of the page, there's what we call refined results. This is very important whereby you can limit to full text and by default we have access to everything here now but there is publication date they are showing 114 results but from 1992 up to 2022 and what i know from your faculty and even your lecturers they need you to have publication is from 2015 Unless if the material is very important, then you can defend it and explain why you'd like to access it when it is 10 years old or more than 10 years old. And then you have to justify whether there are no current materials. So then when we change the duration, for example, let me say from 2005 to 2022, how many materials I'll be able, I'll be able to access 103 material uh, results. And then you can come to the source type. Some are academic journals, some are eBooks, the eBooks there are 27, some are trade publications, magazines, and you click on show more to give you more. Then the subjects, when you go to subjects, agri, agriculture, industrial, industries, India, then there is a, okay, I'm seeing most of the subjects are directed to India. And then when you go to the databases, they are showing you that under Academic Search Premier, we have 76, ebook collection, they are 11, academic, they are 10, and then business collection, they are six. So if you only needed maybe a Academic Search Premier, which has journals, so you click on it, the database will refresh 
and then you only have the 76 results. And these are only articles. These are only articles. So the moment you click on it, you can be able to download it. So the material is loading, then it will display a PDF file. Okay. Uh, this book couldn't resolve the post. So our article is still loading. It could be the network, that's why it's taking long. But otherwise, when the network is stable, it will not take that long. So that is how you can be able to navigate through EBSCO. And then now when we go back to our main platform where we got EBSCO, that's where we are going to go also to find eBook Central. So eBook Central, it's for books only. It's not like EBSCO, which has both books and journals. So when you go to EBSCO, on its main page, on the main menu we have on the left-hand side, it is search bookshop settings and then sign in. You have to sign in. So you click on sign in, which is going to take us to another page, which has two options. One to just sign in if you have an account, and then also you can create an account. So when you are here, you can create an account, you click on the button for create account, and then your first name, your last name, your user email, and then password. So this one, the email, you can use your Gmail, not necessarily the institutional mail we used in the first place. You argue with their privacy policy in terms of service, and then you create that account. And it's approved there and then. If you already have an account, you just sign in, which I'm going to do. And after signing in, EBSCO has a search box. We can search from the general search. We can browse. Browse is going through an alphabetical list of different subjects and disciplines. You can also use advanced search. We shall look at advanced search under JSTOR. So we can search for anything here. Now I can search for agricultural research. And they are giving me 82,134 book results on agricultural research. So these are the materials. New dictionary, new direction is for bioscience research in agriculture. I reward opportunities, but it is too old, 1985.
So what the database will do is to go on highlighting the key terms you've used. And then on the left hand side of the page, it also has refine your search. So you can imagine the first one is 1985. I can't say I'm interested in only those ones published 2022 and there are 29 materials. So the numbers will drop here from uh, the 82,000 to 29. If you need from last year, 2021, I'll click on 2021 and then you're going to give me materials since last year. Now I'm not seeing anything related to agricultural research. You can untick and go back. And then I'll start going through these materials. There's a book here for 2015. Uh, then there's 2018. So they will display to you 10 items per page. You can click on the drop down and display 100 so that you don't run through so many pages. So they are now a hundred per sheet or per page. Genetic engineering of plants, agriculture research opportunities and policy concerns, but it's old. Uh, you, there are some of them are very old books, but you can try to check and then you get the current ones. But I would advise you for current materials, unless if it's literature, you can use the journals. The books are also important, especially when we're doing your class assignments. But when time comes for you to do your dissertation is the journals will be in the right position to give you the most current information, uh, which is in the range of five years. So these are all books. And then let's get one and see how to access. I'll use the first one. When you come to one to every book, we have these special icons here. The first one is full download. Next is read online. Next is table of content and more, and then add to bookshelf. So this is an online bookshelf, not offline. It's an online bookshelf. So the moment you click on it, it will take you to a general folder by default, which has the research. Then you select a folder where I would like to put them. But sometimes you don't have a folder there. You create one because there's a provision for new. Now, for my case, I have a number of folders here. So I can get one. Yeah. I have one for agriculture, which is general. So I can pick that one. And then I'll add the item there. So when you add the item there, in the future, you will not need to search again for the material. The moment you log in, you just go to your bookshelf. So the moment you tick, they select it, the icon instead of a plus sign, just change it to a tick. And then if you want to view more details about the book, you can right hand click and open it in a new page. And then they'll give you full details. Uh, ebook central has two ways of how to download this book some of this book you can be able to download an entire book in pdf like this one you can be able to download the entire book but there are also some books which you cannot be able to download the entire one but you can borrow it for 21 days so this one you can download a full book just go to download the instruction is a very clear if you only need a chapter you run through and you check for a chapter. So let's look for a more recent material, which we can be able to, to borrow instead of downloading a full PDF. This one is also full.
So like this one for bioresources technology and sustainable agriculture, biological and biochemical research. So now this one, you, they are giving you different instructions. Get all pages require a free third party software. Check out this book up to 21 days. So now the instructions keep ch changing depending on the author's uh, instructions. So it's the author, it's not the database which makes these decisions. So when you come to a book like this one, they are telling you you can only be able to download 74 pages and only copy 44 pages. Yet the book, when you look at its details, it's a huge one, just 293 pages. Then the chapters or the parts, they've given you the number of pages per each chapter. So as you download, you have to bear in mind. But even if, even if you don't mind, since you logged in your account, the system will let you know that you've reached the limit of PDF download. So if you need to download a full book, you click on download, and it will give you a secondary page asking which device you are using. But most cases, by default, it picks the device. Then you continue. So when you continue, you are required to have Adobe Dict Editions to download this book. And then you can get this on this orange button. The moment you click on it, it takes you to another page to download Adobe Dicto Editions. Then also the gadget you are using, whether phone or a laptop, it will require an Adobe ID. So you have to download an Adobe ID. So you go to, uh, you, cl you click on Adobe ID, which takes you to a page for you to create an Adobe ID for that particular gadget. It's known that when you, ins you create it, then later you'll have to use it on another computer. It works only on one gadget. So when you are, this is done once for the machine you are using, then next time you just say done with this step. Now I've not gone through the downloading because I already have it installed here. And then you come to the loan length. It can be one day, seven days, 14 days or 21 days. So if we select say, one day, those will be only 24 hours. And it starts counting immediately. Then you click on download. So creating an Adobe ID, you go to that new page and then you just click on create an account if you don't have one and then you create it. I will not create because I already have an account with them. And in this particular, Budget. So I'll double click on the download and it's going to open under Adobe Digital Editions, which I already installed on this gadget. So the moment it displays a page of this nature, it means your internet is not stable enough. So when your network is stable enough, then it will be in position to download the, the book. So that's why it's giving an error, error getting license. So it's not downloading the book, but when you look at my Adobe Dict Editions page. Recording in progress. 
when you look at my page, I have some books already which have expired, which means I tried to download them and they expired. So if it fails to download, oh, Charity is saying, she can't log into Simpa tool. I tell you first to make sure that you can log in on Alpha. Make sure that you can log in on Alpha or Moodle. Then you'll be able to log in on Simpa tool. So, uh, sorry that about that I had to respond to her immediately. So these are books which I downloaded earlier, but they expired. And in case I need to access them again, that's where the bookshelf is very helpful. I'll go to my bookshelf and pick the book from there. Now this one, since it has failed and I'm interested in it, the add to bookshelf icon is also here. I can add it. So next time when my network is stable, I'll be able to download it. So where is my agriculture? It's here, all the add. So it has been added successfully and I'm done. So I'll not waste time. Next time when maybe after peak hours late in the night, I will go and download my book and have access to it for the next seven days at selected area. So that is ebook central. That's how you can be able to download materials there. Then I talked about browsing. It has the browsing element. So when you go to browsing, you'll be able to look at uh, a number of different uh, disciplines and under disciplines, there are different subjects. So your area is under science and technology. I understand there are those who are doing agribusiness. You'll also be able to find information on business under business stroke management or economics. So if it is basically under agriculture, then we have agriculture here as a general subject. Then also there is botany, there is geology, and if you have maybe biology and natural history materials, you can be able to visit them as well. Then lastly, with this link, we started with the ST Proxy or Simpa tool. We are, look, we are going to look at JSTAR or journal storage. So JSTAR, it's a multidisciplinary database which hosts materials up to the end of the previous year. So what I mean, we can be able to access material on JSTAR uh, up to December 2021. So the one was published this year, there will be, we shall have access to them in by early January 2023. That's how their management works. And we don't have any powers to change because we are just receiving materials from their end. They do everything for us. So when you come to JSTAR, it has the, the basic search, but it also has what we call advanced search. Then it also has what the browsing. We talked about browsing under ProQuest, the book central. So even here, you can browse. So I want us to compare Best search and advanced search. What's the difference? So we are going to look at this here. So under advanced search, you are given a number of search boxes and you can add more search boxes as much as you want. But also we have what we call the Boolean operators. The and, or, not, and then just has near five, near 10, near 25. So it has more than three, but the major ones are three and or not. So the Boolean operators help us or assist us to connect our key terms of either the assignment or our research. And then you can, because the database will fail to interpret your request if you type there a full sentence of your coursework or a full topic of your study. So you have to pick out the key terms and ones we use when we are searching. 
So for example, if I'm looking at, Excuse me, sir. I had lost you a bit. Eh? My internet went off uh, from this website when you are starting this website. Okay, we are we are at Ebusco, rather Jester. So Jester, we've just started. There's nothing you've lost. So uh, we've just started on Jester, and Jester, I said. It also has similar features like the rest of the databases we've looked at, the basic search, the browsing by subject, and then also advanced search. So I want us to compare advanced search and basic search. So we are now at the advanced search. I'm searching for entrepreneurship and agriculture. management. So if I don't want to include the management element, I can say not. So meaning the database will give me information on entrepreneurship and agriculture, but the management element will be left out to not be included. Then when you come to all fields, when you select by, by author or by item title, it means your key terms, the database will connect them to either the author who has written about them, or if you select item title, it means all the results should bear in their title, entrepreneurship, agriculture, management. But we always advise you to leave it at all fields so that you can get a wider scope of resources. And then I'm not going to leave it with not, I'll say and, because I need to access. And then select an access type. And then if you say all content, it will give you what we don't also have access to. That's why by default, they are selecting content I have access. And then you come to the item type. Am I looking for only books? Am I looking for only articles? Am I looking for only research reports or reviews? You can select. And then, you know, for example, I would say articles. Okay, I, I only need articles. Then when it comes to language, you may say you only need materials in English. So the rest of the languages, you don't need them to be included. Then you come to the publication year. You can sign it from 2018 to 2022, because that is the range of five years. And then I can come, if I have a journal title, I know it, I can type it there. If I don't, I leave. Then you come to filtering, journal filtering. Am I looking at results under African studies, under agriculture in general, under African American studies, so it's up to me to decide. Maybe I'm looking at uh, entrepreneurship, agriculture management, and aquatic science. Of recent, the parliament has just passed uh, an act, which was a bill over fishing on, the, on our natural lakes. And the president, when they took him the act to sign on it, he had some issues with about, I think, four clauses or five. So the bill had to go back to parliament. So maybe it's missing out something on entrepreneurship. And my interest is on aquatic science. Then when I'm looking at information on entrepreneurship, agriculture management, I'm specifically looking at aquatic science. Or I can leave all those ones unticked. And then I'll just click on submit advanced search. I'll submit. So let's see the results. Then we can go to basic search and do the same. It is enter entrepreneur, entrepreneurship and agriculture. and management. Okay. This is basic search now. 
then I can put it in quotes. What the quotes mean that you need exactly that info, not anything outside, outside that. If you don't include the quotes, it will give you a lot of information, but also something which is just nearer to entrepreneurship and agriculture and management. So I'm putting it in quotes because this is basic search. And then I'll search. I would like to compare the results. And here they are giving me no results. Let me check basic search. Basic search is giving me 348 results. Then I'll come here and remove the quotes and see what happens. Because the quotes, they limit you. So they are giving me 10,653 results over my search term. But that is basic search. But when you go to advanced search, this is what they've given you. Because in advanced search, we are able to select the exact area of your interest, as well as set the duration of publication or the publication dates. Here it will take you time on basic search, it will take you time to come back here and filter for journals. The other side, we did it once. You'll come here and set the, 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 the duration from maybe 2018 to 2022. And then you'll come also to the subject area and select the subject in order to pull down these 10,653 results so that you can have at least a smaller list you can navigate through. So that's the difference between the two. Then you can download. So just click on download PDF and JSTOR will show you a second page for terms and conditions, accept and download. If you don't accept, you'll not be able to download the material. Then it also has the citation, you click on citation. It has three citation styles already developed, MLA, Chicago and APA. So if you are using APA, you just copy. If you're using Chicago, you just copy. And when you copy, you paste it in your, in your reference list and you organize this uh, in alphabetical order according to the surnames of the author. So that is the beauty with the JSTOR. Then lastly with JSTOR, I talked about browsing. Let's look at browsing. Browsing basically has the subject subjects, but they are categorized first as disciplines and under disciplines, you find they are different subjects. So for your area, you will go under science and mathematics. And that's why you'll find agriculture, aquatic science, uh, biological science, botan and plant science, then environmental science, you'll find there zoology. And if you are doing a uh, agribusiness, uh, management and entrepreneurship, then you can go to business and economics. And then there is business Women studies, economics, finance, marketing and advertising, labor and employment and so on. So when you go to a specific subject, for example, the one for botany and plant science, let's open it and have a look. It will take you to a page where you'll be able to view a list of different journals. And according to this subject, we have 87 journals which are organized alphabetically. Remember, we are browsing, we are not searching. And every journal, they will show you when its publication started and so far where they ended. So that is the range. Then you can search within a subject. So you can search within botany and plant science. But if anything is not related to botany and plant science, I will get no results. So I have to go to a specific subject when I'm also aware of what I'm looking for. But if I'm not aware, you can go back and use 
the search uh, boxes we started with, either basic search or advanced search. So those are the three databases so far. And then the last one is called research for life. Research for life. So you just type in your browser, research for is in digit, research for life. So research for life, when you go to this page, and check in the chat, I've posted it there, the link. So when you go to research for life on their homepage, you go straight away to access content, click on the drop down and select access content. Okay, excuse me for a minute, please.
Uh, I'm sorry, I had a call here which urgently needed my attention. That's why I'd move out. I'd moved out for those few minutes. So members, we can continue. Where I ended, I'd shared with you the link for research for life. So this is a portal which you can be able to access outside our logins we did in the first place using the institutional login emails. So the reason why it's not on the other on the other platform, it has its own off-campus link that you can't get two positives and put them together. You will cause trouble. So we cannot put this under the other platform because for it, it has its own new off-campus link. So that's why we are accessing it separately. So when you come here on the main page, we have the collection. And the collection is a combination of information under Hinari. Hinari is health information and the, for health workers and medical workers. Agora is agriculture and related the disciplines. We have Adi, which is for innovations and the technology. Then we have Goli, which is for those in law, and then also OR for environmental management. So all these are being supported by UN entities. For example, Agora is being supported by the Food and Agriculture Organization. So then we also have the content. So under the content, what we can access under Research for Life, there are journals, there are books, reference sources, databases, free collections, uh, publishers, and then recent resources. So when you want to search for materials here, you go to the search box, and then you type in your search from there. So if I type there, agriculture systems, okay? Agricultural systems. Then I'll search. So they are giving me nine hundred eighty-eight thousand nine results. These are too many. And these materials, the ones we have access to are ones which have PDF. So the moment you say material without a PDF, that one you will not be able to download it. So the ones we have, have access to, they have PDF. And then it also has the range on the left hand side of the page, refine your search. So you can refine your search. And under here, we have the publication dates. So you can say for the last five years or three years or one year, then we have a number of disciplines here. Am I looking at, uh, at agricultural systems and agriculture in particular? And then we also have the subject area here. And then you can specify a specific subject. If I'm looking, for example, at agricultural systems and environmental science and ecology, there are 1,000. There are 19,000 results. So there are a number of subjects here. So the moment you click on a specific subject, the total numbers, they will, they will drop down or the results will drop down. So downloading such materials, the moment you click on PDF to open in a new tab, and then you'll be able to download the materials. So basically that's how you can be able to access uh, research for life. So lastly, on this part of e-resources is one of the aggregators, rather the search engines, which is called Google Scholar. So after looking at all those databases, if you fail to get what you want from there, you can use also Google Scholar, not google.com, Google Scholar. So Google Scholar, we are going to go there briefly and have a look, how does it operate? 
Okay. So when you come to Google Scholar, it has a search box. And then for you to enjoy its services, it would be better to have logged in. You should have a Gmail account. So let me first sign out. So when you come here, it has what we call my library, my profile, but all this you can be able to do it clearly when you sign in. So you go to sign in, you can type in your email address. So you can search from here. I'll search for agricultural research. And they are giving me 5 million. Six hundred ten thousand results. That's a lot. But on the left hand side of the page, we have the range, as we've been seeing with the other databases. I can't say I need from 2018. And when you say 2018, the numbers have dropped to 1 million 640,000 results. Okay. If you need review articles, you can click on review then you only have review articles. The numbers have dropped down to 183,000. Remember, we started in millions. So now these are the ones you have access to, and they are coming from authorized databases. They are materials from Science Direct, Wiley, uh, we have NIH government, then we have Gates Open Research, uh, and then from Google.com, then Springer. And then you can keep on clicking on another page, another page, as you see the results. Now, when, for example, you are interested in a specific article, for example, uh, this last one, Knowledge, Productivity, and Return to Agriculture Research, a review. It's a publication of 2019. And I would like to add it to my bookshelf. Before even downloading it, I'll click to save or add it to my library. I'll click on save. When you click on save, it takes you to your library. But it gives you an option to create an, a folder. I already have a folder here which I created earlier of agricultural research. I'll just click on it and add. So this article has been added there. Even if I don't download it, anytime I'll be able to view it. Then it also gives you the citation. Click on the word site. Okay. And then you are given MLA, APH, Chicago, Harvard, Vancouver. If I'm using Harvard, I'll click on Harvard. Right hand click on it and copy. And then I'll paste this in my reference list. Also, it gives you related articles. On the same article we are on, we can right hand click and look at articles related to this specific article. And there are a number of them here. So you can be able to get them. And then you can also have a look at all versions of this same article. Now we can be able to download it and click on PDF and then we are able to download. Now there are scenarios if you are interested in an article like this second last one, mass spectronomy based non-targeted non and targeted analytical approaches in fingerprints and the metabolomics of food and agriculture research. And you need access to this article. 
if it has no PDF, first look at all versions and find out whether there is a PDF. Now it doesn't have, so what you do, if you don't have, sorry, it might, okay. If you don't have access to all of them, then you can share with us, you can share with us, just copy this information, all of it, and share it with us, then we can be in position to find a way of getting this article for you. Because there are scenarios when an article doesn't have a PDF option. Even those ones which are having HTML, you might go there and there is no provision for PDF, but we can always look for, for it so long as you've given us all this information. So let's go to the left-hand side of the page. After looking at how we can get the materials, let's go here and look at our library, my library. So when you go to your library, it will show what you've populated there. And for my case, I have here agricultural research, I have customer rations, go to market and production, nutrition education, nutrition management, and so on. Because this is what I've populated. Then I can search within my library. So if you've not selected materials to be saved here and you search for them, you will not be able to get them. You have to go back to the main search box where we started from. Then also you can create alerts. You can create alerts. When you click on alerts, it takes you to a new page of alerts and alerts will go straight out to your email address. You click on create alert. Okay. So when you click on that, then you, you type in what you want to be alerted over. I can't say still. Culture management. And then I'll click on create alert. Automatically it will first show you what is relevant, what they have, but you click on create alert. So when you click on create alert, it will give you the most recent results, meaning what has been published last night, what, what is going to be published tomorrow or any other day. So you will not get all the materials. You will get current materials from the time you inserted in your alert. And those alerts will go straight away to your email. And that's where you will find a link to download those PDF materials. In case you are done with that assignment or that project, you can just come back to your alerts and cancel. So you click on cancel and then you accept to cancel alert. So I've canceled, I don't have any alert there. So that's how you can be able also to use Google Scholar for academic benefit. Thank you so much. I want to first pause this session here. Uh, unless if there is any question, you can raise it before we get a break of 10 minutes. Then we move to turn it in. Thank you. You can unmute yourself and ask, or you can send them the question in the chat. Cyrus, do you have anything to say? We are on reviewing your video. Okay. So keeping quiet means we've understood. Okay, let's have uh, a 10 minutes break. Then at 11.38, we can move to another oh, first wait. Let me see, there's a question here. 
The recording, you receive it. That one, you receive it through uh, Dr. Rosemary. I'll share the recording. That one, you shouldn't worry. Uh, hello? Yes, please. On um, the citation that uh, you talked about, uh, are you able to tell the difference between those different methods of citation? Like Which a small, a small exp explanation on the citation. I see APA. And yes, those people. are those are citation styles, but uh, our university recommended APA. But uh, also your faculty, uh, I will find out from Dr. Rosemary whether you have a specific one because you are science students. Because what I know mostly, scientists they usually use Harvard style. So those are styles of referencing and index citations. And if you want to learn more about citations, uh, there, there is a lot of information online, which you can check and then you find out, for example, if you want to find out how APA works, how Harvard works, how Vancouver works, there's a lot of information online or MLA or Chicago, then you can learn a lot about how you can do the citations. But uh, on Friday, we shall look at that in particular. Uh, the session we are going to have on Friday, we shall be talking about that. Thank you. Yes, you can access this uh, content regardless of the campus, because even if you are at home, live along being at campus, even if you are at home, even if you are in the garden, so long as you have internet, even if you are deep, 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 deep in the village, so long as you have internet, you'll be able to access these databases. Google Scholar doesn't require any add-on. Research for Life doesn't require. The three databases we first looked at, you have to first log in under uh, ucusimpatool.dk, the link which I shared earlier. So it's the one you are supposed to go to and then you are able to, uh, to log in using the UCU credentials and then you can be able to access these resources. So I've, I've shared it again in the chat. So in case there is anybody uh, who, cannot, who, who has not yet registered with Alpha, definitely you will not be able to access these resources under Simpa tool. But I'm getting information here from uh, Owot, is in Juba, is accessing everything from Juba. So if you are here in Kassanda or in Mubende, or you are here in Imbari, or you are just in, in Moroto, you, you cannot give an excuse if somebody in Juba is able to access these resources. So you can be able to access them even if you leave African continent and you go to another continent, so long as you use the right links, you'll be able to access these resources. Thank you. All right, so let us stay uh, online, don't leave. The next session will not be too long. It's going to take less than an hour so that we can appreciate how Tanitin works. So we can have a 10 minutes break and then we shall start again at 11.43. So the moment you reach here at tanitin.com, because that's the platform we use, 
you click on login And then when it brings you to a page of this nature, since it's your first time, you don't type in your email address and password, you go to new user and click here. And it will give you a page, create a user profile, and under this, you click on student. So when you reach here, you are required to have a class ID information. All the students might, must be enrolled in an active class. Enroll in a class, please enter the class ID and enrollment, enrollment key that were given by your instructor. That is the lecturer. So you type the class ID and enrollment key, your names, your email address, confirm the email address as well, your password, confirm the password, then you come to secret question. The question is already designed. So you pick a question of your choice and then you type there the answer. Agree that you are not a robot and then later click on I agree, create profile. So it will take you to the account. So I'm going to share in the chat some of the training classes which I created. I have one for every business. So that is the first class ID and enrollment key. So you can pick that and follow what I would have just demonstrated. Then I have another one for agriculture research. So those are the classes, so you can give them a try. Just log into any of them, and then we shall be able to continue. So use one of the, don't interchange. If you've decided to use agribusiness management, don't interchange its class ID with the one for agriculture research. It will not work out. So use at least one and create an account. So I'm giving it 10 minutes. So at one minute past midday, we should be having some people who have finished and then we we'll continue.
You can even do it on your phone. If you only have a phone with you, you can do it. So long as it's not the phone uh, you are using for this session. But if, if you've already noted down the steps, still you can minimize the account, rather the page you, you are viewing for this session, and then you can create an account. Okay, uh, what is saying you already created, you don't need to, if you already have, please don't. Please don't create again. This goes to only those who did have accounts. So if you already have, please don't.
I hope a number of us have been able to create accounts. And the, I'm seeing in the chat people like Ogwang, uh, people like Owot, they already created, and Alex is saying he's also done. So I hope a number of us, we are done with this. Now, what we are going to do after creating an account, I'll give an opportunity to, I'll give an opportunity to, to, to award who already created an account. Uh, what can you unmute yourself and tell us what you view when you log in on your account, please. What? Okay, if we cannot, Alex, Alex, what can you view? You've just finished creating the account. What are you able to view? Uh, what I can say here is on top of it is the coming in. And of course, in the display, you will say all classes enroll in a class. Mm. Enroll in a class, and then citation hope. And then under it is the Uganda Christian University, the class ID, the class name, the instructor, status, the subject, the end date, and drop class. Okay. Are you able to view a link on plagiarism yes. on the main menu? Yes, so. So when you try to right hand click on it and open it in a new tab, what are you able to view? It's opening. Okay. So it is about plagiarism.org. And then asking question, what is it? The fact yes. that mm -hmm. it's Plagiarism when writing and then the latest from the blog and other okay. yes, okay. All right. So members, uh, I want to thank Alex because he's on the right track. He's able to view uh, exactly what is happening on the account. So I'm also going to log in as a student and then you'll be able to, then we can move together. So, Yes, I'm available. I'm available here now. Yes, you are available. Yes, uh, this is a award. award. Yes, yes. So what? What are you able? Uh, at least now, for you, you have a prior experience better than Alex, who has just created an account. So, what are you able to view on your page? Yes, on my page, I see my profile is also there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then the user information, the message, the student. Mm -hmm the help then the log out that is from up then i see also what alex have seen all classes then enroll in a class what is plagiarism the citation help mm -hmm. then uh there are also texts that are given i could i can't read them all then there is uganda christian university mm -hmm. then there is class id class name agribusiness management the instructor name is also here the status the date and the drop class this is what uh, i'm able to see okay then are you able to see the assignment which was created there yes uh, which assignment is there this agribusiness management I don't so know when you the one. okay yes, yes that's the one yes okay so okay thank you so much uh, I think members, now you can appreciate you've received the feedback from your fellow students. Uh, this is not rocket science, it is real. And the, I, I don't understand what Geoffrey is asking. He's saying, I seek guidance with the class ID and enrollment, enrollment key. I think these ones I shared them, I can repost them in the chat again, maybe. But, but I've, I've not understood him actually what he wants exactly. Uh, let me just post them again in the chat. I don't know whether that is what Godfrey you want. But, uh, I, I, I'm not getting you clear when you say guidance because 
Hey, Charity is saying I can't see the assignment. So, okay, let me log in. Then I can demonstrate clearly. Uh, let me log in as a student, not as a staff. So the, class, the, the one I've logged in, it's the agricultural research. And to some of you who already have agricultural research, which you've logged in, I think you can be able to view the instructor. It is Stefan Asgarinya, he's the one who created it. And it, the class is ending on 31st December. So, Alex and the, what they shared with us, what they can view all classes, enrollment in a class, what is plagiarism, citation help. So when you click on what is plagiarism, it can take you to another page where you can read about plagiarism. So take your time, but we're not going to go through all this, but take your time, read about plagiarism. There are videos there on plagiarism, then on the left hand side of the page, understanding plagiarism, preventing it, teaching about it, plagiarism checking, plagiarism research, plagiarism policy. So all that information is there for you to read. Then when you go back on the, our main menu of the class we've entered, when you click on citation help, then you can get information on how to do a uh, citation so there's also a lot of information here about citation and referencing then enroll in a class if you have another class because when you click enroll in a class it means you are going to add let's enroll and see so when you say enroll they'll take you to class stroke section id the ones i've already shared and then enrollment key so if you've enrolled for agricultural research and you'd like to enroll for agribusiness management, then you put the details for agribusiness management here so that you are able to enroll in two different classes. So let's go back to home. So when you are here, our class name is agricultural research. Just click on it for all those who have created accounts, click on it once. So I don't know whether after clicking on it, you are able to view this. Uh, and then there, are, there is an assignment which I created there and it is research concept paper. That's the one which I created. And the submission is started on 16 September. They will be due by 21st October. So at 11.59 PM East African Standard Time. So when, when that time clocks, nobody will be able to submit the assignment. Nobody. So now when you come here, you click on, now mine is having resubmit because I already submitted an assignment and there is a similarity report here. And the message says, this is the percentage of text in your paper that matched sources in our database. Click to view the similarity report. So Turnitin has already created the similarity report. But when I was creating this assignment, I gave it an option of multiple submissions because this is work in progress. It's not an exam. If it was an exam, you submit once. I would have created it for you to submit once. You can't resubmit. So that's why the blue button is having resubmit. So I can resubmit three times now, and then I'll wait for 24 hours later and then submit again. So when you submit your work, when you click on submit, for example, it takes you to a page of this nature, okay? Then you can either Select single file upload or cut and paste. Cut and paste, it means you'll cut your essay and paste it. But if I have it as a folder, by default, my names are there because I'm a student. And then I'll type there the, the, the submission title of the essay. And then I'll 
search for it or choose it from my computer or from Google Drive and then upload. And after uploading, I will confirm. Then after confirmation, in less than 10 minutes, the report will be there. And then let's go back to the report. Okay. So my report here, they are telling me to click on the percentage so that I can be able to view the similarity report. So I'll click on it. So this is my report still online. On the left-hand side of the page, let me try to maximize it. On the left hand side of the page, there is a drop down. Then, before the drop down, there is all sources. So, when you click on all sources, it will display all sources which have percentages of plagiarism. So, or what similarity? So, when you go to, for example, uh, when you go to five, five percent. This work was submitted by a student earlier. These are student papers which were submitted earlier. So it will keep on giving the percentages of where the work was picked from. Some are internet sources. Okay. Then I can click on the drop down, download icon. And the moment you click on it, it brings a small page here. For download, they're giving you three options. Originally submitted, that means you'll get the original paper you submitted. Digital receipt, just a receipt, uh, acknowledging your submission. Then if you want the report in PDF downloaded, you click on current view. And now I'm going to interpret the report for you here. And that's what your lecturers will be doing. So when you submit an assignment and you submit it under Tanity, you will be getting reports. That means the, if you want to submit work and you want to test plagiarism, you can submit through this. Mm -hmm. Yes, hey. you can, depending, depending if the class has not yet been uh, closed, because now, these, these classes have given you the essays. You can use them to test your essays, but by 21st of October, they will expire. But still I can make an extension because I'm the instructor who created those two classes. So it has downloaded. Okay, so you can click on the download. And here is my paper. Okay. And when you look at my paper, it goes on highlighting the areas which have been discovered, which are similar. So that is page two. When you go to page three, you can see this paragraph. Uh, page five. Okay, page six. And then when you come to references, they've all been colored. And the reason is these references were used by another person elsewhere. So they may not raise a query. Then you come to the originality report. This is where you need to understand. They are telling you 21% 20, 20, are student papers, 6% they are publications, 8% are internet sources, and the similarity is 21%. And then when you look here, submitted to a Zing University is 4%, and anything in red with the number one is coming from a Zing University. And then anything with number two, a 3% is coming from Leeds Bucket University. Number three with this color, the same. 
and then it continues up to down here where we have also a publication and then also internet sources as well. Then we we'll also have a 1% from South University, which is number 13. So if I want to paraphrase number 13, I will go into my content and find out where number 13 is in red. It is here. So meaning this information around here, which has 13, it was once submitted to that university. Then in number one, where you see number one, still in red. So that was submitted in that institution. So you can paraphrase it. So that's where the concern will be. Then when it comes to references, references it's understandable that because it's not only who has used the same references, they'll keep on being highlighted because they've been used by several researchers and other people who have been submitting essays. But the question always comes in your work. For example, I have my work here, which is being highlighted in red and then purple, but I have the index citations here. When you go to the next page up, uh, for example, on page four, there are sentences or paragraphs which are being highlighted, but I have my citations in here for this part. So the question will always be, if you've not put in the index citations, it will, it will always raise questions. Because even here on page three, uh, it has highlighted some text, but I have my reference rather my citation in there. So the lecturer is the judge, it's not the system, but the system helps the lecturer to find out whether this is your original work or you copied and pasted it and you did paraphrase uh, your work. Because at master's level, we need to acknowledge and appreciate the original composer of the information or the artwork. So basically that is turn it in. Uh, someone is saying that in agribusiness management, there is nothing, okay, sure. Uh, I'm going to check. So that is the, how you can be able to use turn it in. Unless when there are questions, but let me check for someone who is saying that in agribusiness, there is no, Assignment, I remember creating an assignment there. So let me try to log out and see as a student. So for as a student, you will not be able to view this page because for me in, in, in a category of a lecturer, I'm able to view all my classes here. And then someone is saying that under agricultural management, there is no assignment. Let me see whether I didn't create. Oh, okay, let me add an assignment. There was an assignment added. I think there is, let me see. Okay, I'm going to create an assignment under agribusiness. So for those who have 
uh, logged in creating that. Call it assessment. Okay. And since today is 55th, I'll say submission can start straight away from midday. And then the deadline, I'll give it the 31st of October. So for those who created the outcomes using agribusiness management, uh, let me finish up, then you can refresh. So just refresh your accounts, then you'll be able to see the paper there, rather the assignment there. And the, when I double click, so far two people have submitted. I'm seeing Jack Chimbugwe, I'm seeing Bonnie Osen submitted. And then the rest, you've just created accounts. There's no any submission. Uh, I'm seeing here, Victoria, Alex, Barbara, Charity, David, Damari, Joel, Miriam, Emmanuel, Alan, Jovian, Joseph, and Proskovia. So you've not yet submitted anything. So for you as a student, you'll not be able to view this, but I'll be able to view it. So this is what lecturers actually will be able to see. And then they will just check the similarity report and find out uh, whether uh, it matches the standards or the recommended standards of the university. Then when you are there, uh, for those who have gone into agribusiness, just right and click where we have more actions and click on submit. So you click on submit, then you see your names will automatically be there. Now, because I'm using the instructor account, that's why you don't see my names by default. Because as an instructor, I can enroll. So I can enroll all of you since you've already created accounts. So I'm seeing your names here. So I can keep on enrolling one by one and then I'll keep on checking your work. But because that is very tiresome and would like you to appreciate the use of this platform, that's why a student yourself, you can be able to uh, submit your assignment as an individual. Now, when you look at the, the second assignment, which I've created, the assessment essay, uh, still because you created accounts, so you can be able to uh, log in. For example, if I get Proskovia, all her details will be put here, then I'll submit her work on her behalf. But please do it yourself. Uh, the, the accounts are there. Uh, just to go to more actions and submit, and then you'll be able to submit your work. Oh, okay, Jack is saying most of the work is online. And how can we get information from the internet without being, being culprits to turn it in or to our lecturer? Now you need to paraphrase your work. So uh, we have paraphrasing tools online. So when you go online, you can check and look for a paraphrasing tool, but you have to be very careful because some of the tools, most of them, they have free access, but they also have a premium access. Premium means payment. But what you have to be very cautious about is the paraphrasing tools. Sometimes they change the meaning. They change the meaning of the passage or the essay. So you have to be very careful. Then you can also use what we call uh, a thorus. 
I don't know whether you've ever heard about a thorus. So a thorus, it has a number of synonyms. So which can interpret, which can give a lot of, uh, more, uh, more words of the same meaning. So when you go online, you can be able even to download a thorus. For example, you can just type there and say, you say an online thorus, it means you'll be able to access it online, but uh, I can download, uh, I can come, or on your phone, you can get an app, a thorus app, and then you keep on changing the words. For example, I can say download, an offline thesaurus dictionary. Offline meaning that if I'm not online, I can be able to use it. Or I can download a thesaurus in PDF. Then I'll come here and look for a PDF. For example, there is the Oxford thesaurus and AZ dictionary of synonyms. Then because it's a PDF, then I can be able to download it. So I'll be using that one. Then there's also another one here, which only has the Thaurus, and it, there's a PDF provision. There is a Thaurus of English, nano PDF. So you can also download that one. Uh, controlled vocabulary and Thaurus design training manual. That one is not a Thaurus, it's a training manual. So when you go on Google, you can search and download a thorus which will help you to paraphrase your work. There is one here for Millennium Webster Thorus. Let me click on it and see. Okay, this one seems to be online, it's not a PDF. So you can look for the one which has a PDF version, then you can be able to, there is also Webster's new dictionary of synonyms, so that's a dictionary, but a thorus is better. So you can go online, download it, and then you can be able to use it so that you don't become a culprit. And it's not only about paraphrasing, but also make sure you do the citations. So we shall look at citations on Friday. So that's the arrangement we, I have with the, your dean. So on Friday at 10 a.m., we shall be meeting again. And then we shall be specifically looking at citations and referencing in particular. So that's the session. So we shall look at that in depth so that you don't face into trouble, trouble as Jack has expressed. Uh, Bonnie is saying, I would like to know, I would like to know whether if I submit my assignment, the first version of the assignment submitted will be automatically deleted and the current version maintained. It will not be deleted. It will be kept in the database. Uh, it's normally deleted at the end of the module. Only an instructor can delete. So if you talk to the lecturer and you request him or her to delete, he can delete. But there are some essays they wouldn't love to delete. For example, you're working on a project, which is going to take a year. We need you to see where you started from, where you were, and how far you've gone. For example, if it's a research proposal, the lecturer may not accept to delete the first version because you may reach somewhere maybe after presentations in the Viber, and what you did in the first place is important and need to bring it back, yet it was deleted. So normally the deletion can come automatically at the end of the deadline of the assignment or after the lecturer looking through the work. And then the lecturer himself can delete. But for you as a student, you cannot delete. You keep on submitting, turn it in as a database. It will keep on storing but it will not refer back to what already was put in the system. Because when, we are, when it is an exam, we select permanent storage. But now for these essays, we've not selected permanent storage. So it will not be kept there permanently, but it will be there in a the cloud. 
And because when, it's, when we keep it, when we select storage permanently, it would mean that if you resubmit, the percentages will just keep on increasing, increasing, increasing. So that's why for the assignments, we don't. But for exam, uh, definitely you have one opportunity, single submission, and then the work will straight away go to the permanent storage. Because that's an exam. I think I've, I've answered you well on that, Bonnie. All right. Uh, thank you so much, friends. I think we end here. It has been long since 10 a.m. and it's now half past midday. I want to release you. Uh, we meet again on Friday at 10 a.m. Uh, Dr. Rosemary will be in position to share with you the link we shall use on Friday. I wish you a good afternoon. Uh, if you have uh, any questions, uh, let me share my email addresses here. And then you can raise your questions or concerns or be in position to respond. Or you can send a WhatsApp message. Then my phone contacts. So those are my phone contacts. Uh, MTN is on Telegram and then Airtel is the one on WhatsApp. So we can keep in touch. I wish you uh, a nice afternoon. Bye. Bye-bye. Okay, bye-bye. Thank you. You're welcome.